Hey, fill her up, will you? Hey, you're the fellow who was going up to old Colonel Bernine's ranch about, uh, about a month ago, wasn't it? That's right. I uh, recollect you told me your name. I don't recollect I ever told you. Oh, uh, fill it up, you said. Right. Honey, why don't you go buy that yard good you said you'd need? Good idea. I'll check the tires while you're gone. We won't be long. Come on, Paul. Come on. Wait for me in the office. Tell him I want to see him. Okay, son. Yeah, forgive me for saying so, mister, but you don't look like a rancher to me. Yeah, how can you tell? You can tell. Old Jed's been here so long, he can smell a cattleman. I'm Sheriff Mace. Glad to know you. Mr. Krivak would like to see you. It's his office over there. Cattleman's Association Building. What's he want to see me for? Oh, just a friendly visit. Why don't you go over? Sure, why not? It's better if he doesn't see you. Might antagonize him and make him too cautious. You'll get your chance at him later. Like I said, Mr. Kreebeck, it'll be my pleasure. C.K. Ranch. I've heard about you. No doubt from Colonel Bernine. That's right. I've been expecting you to show up in this part of the country for some time now. Well, news travels fast. This kind of news. What's that supposed to mean, Mr. Krivak? Mr. Hughes, I'm not a man that pulls punches. If I've got something on my chest, I like to get it off. All right, get it off your chest, Mr. Krivak. Old Colonel Bernine couldn't make go of his ranch. And he wouldn't sell it to me out of plain, ornery cussedness or spite. Is that what you call me in here for? I'll be frank with you. I want that land for many reasons. Um, sit down. Don't smoke. The, uh, the burning land that joins my western section. And there's a pass that would save a lot of miles in my beef when I drive them to railhead. And that... Look here, Hughes. You're new to this life. I'd like to make you a deal. What kind of a deal? I'm prepared to buy you out. The price will be fair, and on top of that, I'll keep you as ranch manager. No deal. You're apt to think differently in six months' time. Not a chance, Krivak. Just out of curiosity, Hughes, how did you ever meet Colonel Bernine? Do I have to answer that? I know he was a big branch of the Marine Corps, but I thought he was before your time. Hughes, I'm sorry about all that trouble you got into. Didn't take you long to identify the name, did it? It rang a bell. As things happened, I... I met a fellow that told me that you were one and the same. Who was that? Like you told me, do I have to answer that? You know, Krivak, I don't know what you've got on your mind. 
But don't try to push me into a corner. You fight back? I might. I don't think you dare. You know what I'm talking about. Just stay on your own side of the fence, that's all. Understand? Been looking the town over? Here, I'll take these. How was the visit, Clem? It was all right. You got him plenty worried, Mr. Krivak. You know, there's no mistaking the fact that Dandy here doesn't like this fellow Hughes. Not one little bit. Well, me and him tangle a few times in the Marine Corps. He liked the discipline, always ready with the rules, everything according to regulations. Sergeant Jim Hughes, the tough D.I., high and mighty. Yeah, but that was five or six years ago, Andy. Well, a man can carry a grudge for a long time, Bob. You know, I read about this case in the newspapers. But I sure didn't connect it with this fellow Hughes, not until Andy told us. Uh, he ain't half the man he used to be, that's for sure. Why don't we give him a whirl just to see how tough he really is? Well, the prison board of parole is watching him. He can't afford to be too tough. What kind of a whirl, Clem? Look, Bob, if there's any trouble, I don't want you to interfere. You stay on the side. Okay. Go get it, Center. Mr. Krivax. It's this guy who killed Spot. He could have stopped it. I know he could have. It couldn't be helpful. Some dogs are just too mean, I guess. Like some people. It was your dog started the fight, Sonny. All right, let's have the rest of it, Krivax. Well, you can't expect to stop dogs fighting over a biscuit. Hey, Sonny, here's a dollar. That ought to buy another dog. That was a dirty, rotten thing to do, Kreebak. I don't like your insinuation, Hughes. Unless you're willing to back them up. I don't pack a gun. Gun or not, I don't think you'd do anything. Sheriff, I'd appreciate it if you'd take care of the dog. OK, kid. I'll see your dog gets a decent burial. That's a promise, Sonny. OK, break it up here. Come on, on your way. Dad, why'd you let him get away with it? Oh. Look, son, if I don't fight back, it's because I know what's best for all of us. Come on, let's go. I'll drive him hard. He'll crack up. He'll be glad to sell. You sure know how to operate, Mr. Krivak. If you need me, I'll be at the Larson Ranch. All right, if I need you. Work pretty good, eh? Yeah. What's eating you? 
I thought you went pretty rough on the kid, Clem, just to prove your point. It's a mean business. Bob, all of life is a mean business. A man's got to fight all the way, all the time. Yeah. That's right, Bob. Even when you don't agree with me, keep saying yeah. He's half wolf. Ma, we need a dog for the ranch. Don't we, Daddy? He'll, he'll take Spot's place. Dear, do you think you can tame a wild animal? Sure, sure I can. I'll make him like any other civilized dog. What would you call him? Well, just so we don't ever think of him as a wolf or wild, I'll call him Dog. Just that, Dog. All right. Dog it is, huh? Poor thing. Let's Afraid and lonely, like something that wants to hide. Better go take him and put a blanket around him, huh? Come on, Dad. Afraid and lonely, like something that wants to hide. That's me, Ellen. Jim, don't ever say that again. I'm crazy about that boy. I know. Soon you'll have to tell him. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell him about the father who isn't a hero after all. You are a hero. Medals, ribbons, he's proud of them all. The war ends and the hero's kicked out, that's me. It's not true, Jim. You say it just to punish yourself. All right, not kicked out, dismissed. Oh, Jim, quit it. Quit living the thing over and over. I can't forget I killed a man. It's big and I It might have been you. It was a quarrel. For a moment, two men swing out like wild animals. He called you names. He hit you. You hit back and he fell. Jim, you can't honestly say that you killed him. The jury said manslaughter. The jury. Years in prison. Fake letters from a place in South America. I don't know how I can ever tell Paul the truth. What about the car, Jim? Yeah. Well, as soon as it stops raining, I'll go back to town and get a fan belt. Let's get back to the car. Well, 
Welcome, welcome. Hello, Colonel. How are you, Good to Jim? see you again. How are you? Nice to see you. Good. This is my wife, Ellen. How are you, ma'am? How do you and this do? this is my son, Paul. Hi, your son. Do? Jim's told me all about you, too. Well, I won't apologize for the house. I'm a confirmed bachelor. Come on in. <laughs> we understand. Yeah, let me get this dog. Yeah, we are. Ah. Here's your deed to the ranch. Here's an order for 20 head of cattle. You can pick them up at the Abbotson Ranch at Stacyville. Uh-huh. An order for livestock, etc. Now, all you have to do is keep up the bank payments. And work, Jim, work night and day. I didn't. I got this place as an inheritance when I retired from the Marine Corps, and I guess my heart was never really in it. But I made up my mind that I'd rot rather than sell to Crevac. And you've got the right wife to help you. There's not another man in the world like you, Colonel Benin. Well, that's a slight exaggeration, Mrs. Hughes, but I'm vain enough to accept it. You know, Jim got a mighty raw deal from everybody, to my way of thinking. So, when I had a chance to do this, I, uh... Well, I haven't got another heir in the world except a sister, and she's a spinster and rich. Jim, there's one more thing. Krivak is mean. He fights a dirty fight. So be on your guard. I will. You have a wonderful son. Yeah, I think so. You know, it's for his sake as much as for you that I'm doing this. Yes, sir. Well, I'll be with my sister in Phoenix, Arizona, so keep me posted. What kind of dog you got there, Sonny? Looks like he might be a wolf. Let be a wolf dog, Sonny. 
What are you doing on our property? <laughs> I know who you are. You're Crevax Riders. When you use that name, put a mister in front of it. More polite that way, son. <laughs> That's an honest question. You deserve an honest answer. We're checking over your range wire. Want to make sure your pappy ain't trespassing on CK property. We'll be seeing you later, son. Stop. Back ought to be along pretty soon. Except to wait. Those two men were pretty mean looking. Looks like they wanted to give us trouble. We'll see. Dad, you're not afraid, are you? Of course not. You sure? I'm sure. See, there's a lot of things I don't understand. Things that I'd like to understand. Yeah, I like what? Well. I guess there's a lot of learning a kid has to do when he's growing up. <laughs> learning never stops, son, not even for grown-ups. And you know, that's a good thing. South America. San Polo. What about San Polo? Well, us coming here to the ranch. You giving up South America. I mean, well, if you liked it so much in South America, why did you come back? I mean... Look, son. A man, if he's any kind of a man at all, fights for the happiness of his own. Now, take this ranch. It gives us security and a future. Above everything else, it gives you a chance to grow up right to the kind of a life that's a good life. Now, so far, we're doing real good. The herd's building, and, and we're going to build it even more as the bank payments are decreased. Then we'll really start shipping cattle. I'm glad you told me all this, Dad. You know something? I think I like this kind of a life. Good to hear you say that. Hey, I've got something out in the barn I want you to see right away. What is it? Well, go ahead and see. Hurry up. Come on. Get on. Come on. Get on. Dog, come here. I'd pay you a little visit, Mr. Hughes. I don't want any trouble with you, Kreebeck. You're jumping the gun, Hughes. I don't want to cause you any trouble. I just want to talk. All right, talk. I must admit you've done pretty well. But you still owe a lot of money. I happen to know that. So? I offered you a deal, first crack out of the box, remember? That offer still goes. I think you'd better be riding back to town, Kreebeck. That's okay. But first, I'd like you to meet an old friend of yours. Annie! Good to see a reunion like this. 
couple of buddies, ex-Marine pals. There's a difference now, Mr. Krivak. Hughes just loved that Marine Corps discipline. Wonder how he liked the prison discipline. Five years, wasn't it, Jim? Pretty long stretch. Dad, what's he talking about? What's he mean? Go on the house, Paul. Take him in, Mother. Dad, tell him he's crazy. Tell him you're in South America. <laughs> South America. That's a hot one. Now, you get off of my property right now. There's going to be trouble. Why wait, Sergeant? I'm ready now. Jim. You heard him, Hughes. You know a man on parole can't carry a gun, Kreebak? Well, his clothes make the man. That your uniform or your stripes, you're nothing. Just plain yellow. Let's go inside. Time for bed, son. All through dinner and all through your homework, you never spoke a word. Paul. He lied to me. Yes, I know. You too. Yes. Why, Ma? Why? Both of you. Both of us. Dad in jail. And all the time we got these letters, supposed to be from South America. When you were a little boy, you were proud to think of him as someone special, a great hero. I guess your father and I, well, I guess we hadn't grown up ourselves. We didn't want you to know, not until you'd understand. I guess we waited too long. Your father is a hero, Paul. If that's any consolation now. He was wounded twice and decorated for valor. It broke your father's heart when he was no longer with the Marines. There's so much to tell you. We love you, Paul. We want to tell you everything. And I'd like your father to explain it to you. Just to you alone. Man to man kind of talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, oh, Mom told me, Dad. I guess there's lots of things I gotta understand yet. Look, son. We got a lot of years ahead of us. I forgot to thank you for the pony. Sure glad you like him. He's wonderful. Guess I'm a pretty lucky kid. <laughs> Dad, we'll fight him, won't we, Krivax Bunch? Yeah. Yeah, we'll fight him. Sure we'll fight him. Come on, let's go. Come on, Doug. proud of you, son. You did it all by yourself. Not a trace of the wire left in him. Oh, sure. But it takes time. <laughs> There's something you've got to be proud of, Dad. Yeah, we'll be shipping that herd to the railhead in about 12 days. Got a lot of money tied up on that beef, son. No, I'll bet. It'll be enough to take care of two packs of Amos Fast Fuel and some left the boot. Say, there's something I want to tell you. 
Yeah? You know those trips I make to Williamsport? Yeah. Well, it's not just to go to the bank. Come on, get that anxious look off your face. I can't help it, Dad. The fact is, I have to check with the parole board. I'll be going there again in a couple of days. Mm. Come on, I want to check that east turn. Okay. Wait here. Andy, I warned you not to trespass on this property. We're not trespassing. Some CK stock are missing. We're just looking for some broke fence. You're a liar. Don't you call me that again, Sergeant. Still packing a gun? Yeah, I got a permit to. Throw it on the ground. No need for that. There, hang on to this. <laughs> Get on your horse and get out here, Andy. And give Krivak my compliments. He's not gonna give up on you that easy, Hughes. You know that, don't you? Guess there's only so much a fellow can take, eh, Dad? That's about it, son. Can they make trouble for you with that? Well, you know what I mean. With the parole board? Yeah. We'll see, but don't you worry about it, huh? Okay, Dad. Come on, let's mount up. Come on, Doc. I'm telling you, Jim, I'm rather disturbed by these letters. They're Krivaks, and you can discount them for all the reasons I told you. Well, he swears, and his men will, too, under oath. You've had your cattle trespassing on his property. He's a liar. You beat up one of his men, Andrew Bates. That's right, but I warned him to stay off of my property. Well, it's not sufficient reason for a beating. Now, this man Bates, he was in the Marine Corps, Camp Stanley. That's right. He states you've always had it in for him, and I'm quoting. Sergeant Hughes swore that if he ever saw me again, it would be his pleasure to persecute me. <laughs> That's so much bilge water. I'm with you, you know that. Certain newspapers have been hammering away editorially at all prison parole bureaus, like this one, for not keeping a stricter check over all parolees. Jim, you know a man named Lee Trent? Lee Trent? I know him. Dunsville Prison. That's right. A fellow named Hawkins? Hawkins. No, no, I don't know him. Well, he was there, too. They were both paroled a couple of months ago. This happened yesterday. What's this got to do with me? Nothing. Except that we have new directives to keep a stricter check over all our parolees. I'm not Trent or Hawkins or whatever his name is. I know. 
Jim, I hope you don't go berserk with this guy, Krivak. Use a gun or, or... Well, just don't do anything that'll prejudice the board against you. I don't think that'll be likely. That's all I wanted to hear you say. Good luck, Jim. Thanks. said we'd ship our beef on the 14th. Oh, that's only two days away. Yep. You know, this is our largest shipment to date. I feel pretty good about it. We're getting up in the world. <laughs> Jim, look. <laughs> Time for bed, son. Okay, Mom. I had earmarked for the bank. Gee, you can see where they were stampeded. Yeah. Prevac knew that we were shipping cattle to Mar. Maybe we could catch up with him. Yeah. You came to go alone? Sure. All right. You head for the river and see what you can find, and I'll go east. We'll meet later, okay? Good. I'll be careful here. Yes, sir.
this way. That's all right. Don't talk now, son. You sure gave me a scare, though. You think I wasn't scared, Stiff. I thought I was a goner. Yeah, it hadn't been for Dog here. He's the greatest, isn't he, Dad? Yeah, he sure is. He's just great. Hughes! Okay, chum. Get up. All right, now let's have it plain and simple. What are you doing up here? I've got a ranch north of here. I heard about it. Grapevine. News gets around about parolees. Jim, you're going to put us up until Hawkins here is better or until the heat's off us for sure. Lee, I'm trying to make something out of my life. i got a wife and this fine boy here. And I've got a wounded pal here. Why don't we let him have it, Lee? Look, you'll be putting me in a spot with the parole board if you do this. Jim, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you what we want. Well, I won't go for it. One more killing won't matter. How far is your place from here? It's a long ways. We could be spotted. We'll take that chance. Hawkins is taking your horse. I'm taking the pony. You and the boy walk in front of us. Let's go, Jim. Jim, so help me. I'm not going to argue with you. Now get going. Hand me that towel, Mrs. Hughes. Don't pull a faint on me. I'm afraid of it. I'm depending on you, Mrs. Hughes. Here, you better take some of this. Stay here, Dad. I don't know, son. You have to let him? Yes, we have to let him. How's he doing? The man who isn't a surgeon, he knows how to take out a bullet. Is he gonna live? I think so. He said he and his friend are taking our room. You know what to do with those compresses, Mrs. Hughes. Fine woman you got there, Jim. Oh, by the way, Bill's staying in that room. He can't be moved. Would you say that parlor window gives a good view of the road? Yeah, I'd say so. Jim, just so you don't try anything, the kid will be with me. Paul, you can curl up in the couch when you want to sleep. You ever listen to the 10 o'clock news? Sometimes. 10-5 now. One of the three gunmen who held up the Williamsport Bank on Tuesday was wounded last night by the police. His dying words led U.S. Marshal Frank Stanton to believe that the other two men, Trent and Hawkins, fled to Putnam County, a lonely region of scattered cattle ranches and the wild Bushnell River. If seen, contact your nearest law enforcement agency and proceed with care. Okay, Hughes. Looks like you're stuck with it. I'll go see how Hawkins is making up. Be with you in a minute. It was too good for you, was it, Dad? I'm afraid it isn't, son. I mean, it's the parole board. Hey, hey, unless you and I get a glass of milk, huh? Okay, Dad.
night, honey. Why don't you get undressed and try to get some sleep? I can't, honey. I can't help thinking of those bank payments, Jim. How will we meet them now? We can't worry about that now. But I'll guarantee you one thing. Creevac's gonna pay for every head of cattle we've lost. Well, how about this? Will you report it to the parole board? I don't know. For the police. Maybe Sheriff Mace. My record's an ex-con. Do you think you'll ever believe it? I didn't give those men protection for a price. And the bank they robbed is the bank we owe money to. Yeah. Don't worry about it. a lot. Keeps bleeding all the time. You gotta do something. In the morning, I'll send someone to town for some medicine to stop the bleeding. It's too risky, Lee. If he was as smart, we can't trust him. I'll handle it. Drugstore in town. Should carry a good supply? I suppose so. Somebody's gonna have to go in after something. Coagulant to stop the bleeding. I'll go. Oh, no, you don't. Maybe you'd like to go. No, but the kid can go. What's the name of the man that runs the store? Star Elkins. You write a note telling him what you want. You cut your hand. You cut it deep on a mesh of tangled fence wire. You can't stop the bleeding. You need a strong coagulant. Paul will take the note in. He'll pick up the medicine and come right back here. You got all that, kid? Paul. Paul, you listen to me, and you listen to me good, so there'll be no mistake later on. You tell anybody about us, you tip off anyone at all, if you don't get back in good time, or if I smell a double cross, both your parents will suffer for it. Now, do you understand what I'm telling you? I'd like to make another patch, Trent. You've already made it. The answer is no. The kid goes. Still trying to play the tough guy, huh? I like to leave myself a margin for safety. And I'd rather gamble on the kid than on you. Now, you go saddle up like I told you to. And you, use, start writing that note. Hi, Mace. Kind of expecting to see Clem today. Oh, he's busy at the ranch. I come in to pick up the mail and some legal papers. 
You want me to check with you? Any trouble from Hughes? No, it's kind of odd. I don't... Well... Well, say what you think, Sheriff. I think Clem's making a mistake. This fellow Hughes isn't going to quit or scare. Not now, not after yesterday. Say, are you with Krivak or aren't you? Well, I'm his friend, but... I can't go on licking a man's boots forever. Not when he starts hitting below the belt. You want me to tell Krivak that? Don't worry, I will. Say, maybe I ought to go with you. You don't have to, Mr. Elkins. A thing like that can be more serious than your dad realizes. Why, I recollect one... I know, one but it's a hot scene. It's a long ride to the ranch. And my dad don't want anybody running. He'll blow me out if I... Fiddlestick. <laughs> what can be more serious than, well, maybe a case of blood poisoning? Yeah, I know, but... Say, you're as nervous as a Mexican jumping and being in a hot tin plate. What's the matter with you, Paul? Please, Mr. Elkins, will you wrap that up and give it to me? Oh, all right. <laughs> It's going to be all right. Yes, sir, I will. Come on, dog. It's a long time coming back with that medicine. Do you happen to know the reason why? Your guess is as good as mine. No need to worry, it's coming in now. Stay where you are. Sit down and tell me exactly what happened. I just hope for everybody's sake you're telling nothing but the truth. Told you everything that happened. And that other dog, the one that's hurt, you say he's a valuable dog? Any dog is to his owner. That's the guy you call Krivak. That's right. You hate him. He hates you. That's about it. Now, supposing he comes up here? He might. With a gun? Maybe. Maybe with the law, too. I don't know about that. Hughes, there's going to be some shooting, maybe some killing. You better make up your mind right now to stay on my side of the fence. You too, Mrs. Hughes. Hawkins. He's sleeping. When he wakes up, see that he gets something to eat. How much did you say you need to pay off that bank mortgage? 
I didn't say. <laughs> you know what I'm laughing at? If I give you the dough to pay off the mortgage, you'll be paying back the bank with their own money. <laughs> oh, they say the flow of money is mysterious. Well, mister, I solved it. I can't use that kind of dough, Trent. I didn't say I'd give it to you. Yeah, we missed the 10 o'clock news. Did you catch the last broadcast? Nope. Don't get any strange ideas about that reward money, Hughes, because the kid's taking over your ship with me. I'm not a bit squeamish about taking a life, yours, your wife's, or anybody's. So don't figure on a double cross or the kid goes first. Coffee? Tell me you're such a big war hero. That is, before your beef, Camp Stanley. Why do I have to? Last night in Hawkins' room, I had a look at some of those things in your closet. That's how I stumbled over those newspaper clippings. I even had a gander at some of them war medals. Lay off of me, Trent. Put you in a bad light, Jim. Ex-con hides bank robbers. People are going to think that and say it. If things were different, I'd fight you, Trent. But they're not. So why don't you join up with us and help us get away? We might even give you a piece of that bank money. You're crazy, Trent. Shut up! You hate me, don't you, kid? Sure, I hate you. I haven't harmed you. What you said to my father. What I said... Oh, you heard us. Is that it? Yeah. Well? You want to know something? Yeah, what? My father's a tougher man than you'll ever be. He's got more bravery in his little finger than you got in your whole body. Well, now. He won his medals in a real war. He don't have to kill people like you do. Kid, you got me backed up against a wall. I can't answer that. You know why my dad's fighting to keep this ranch? You tell me. For me, that's why. Kid. Go tell your mother I want some more coffee. Shake a leg. Come on. Dad! Dad, come quick! What's the matter, son? Those men, if they're lawmen, we'll shoot to kill. Jim, you and Mrs. Hughes and the kids stay right in here. We'll let you have it. I mean that, Jim. That's not the law, and they're not after you. It's Krivak, who's after Paul's dog. Dad, please don't let them get dog. Please don't. Don't worry, dear. They won't. Paul, you take dog and go in that closet. I'll take care of Krivak. We're going with them, just to make sure you stay in line. Back, I warrant you to stay off of my property. Now get out, or I'll swear out a warrant for your arrest. On what charge? Stampeding my cattle and trespassing. You're dreaming, Sergeant. I never came near your cattle. And I'll leave just as soon as you hand over that dog. Why should I? My dog died last night. Yours killed him. My son told me that your dog started the fight. I have no reason to believe that he lied to me. Your dog is a wild animal, Hughes. Wild animals should be killed. Now, where is he? 
I told you once, Krivak, not to push me into a corner. If you don't hand over that wolf, we'll tear this place to pieces till we find him. Paul, you better take that dog out there. You'll kill dog if I take him out there. If you don't, they'll come in here and we'll have to shoot our way out. Please don't ask me to do this. Please, <laughs> Shoot. I hate to do this, kid. We're wanted men. It's his life or ours. You take that dog out now. All right, Paul. Bring him out. Come on. Let him go, Sonny. I don't want to hurt you. Dad, don't let him shoot, dog. Please don't. Parole or no parole? You shoot that dog and I'll kill you. Cover that window, see that they don't come back. We were ready to help you, Jim, if things went against you. The only way you can help me is by getting out of here. We'll be leaving in a couple of days. Lee, there's a car coming up the road, looks like the marshal. Cover that other window. When they get close enough, we'll blast them. Upstairs, Paul. Hurry up. here very long. We better make a run for it out the back through those trees. Cars can't follow us there. friends like the U.S. Marshal, Johnson of the parole board. And Krivak paying us for the cattle we lost. It's almost too good to be true. Yeah. Jim, remember that old Yankee song we like so much? Come again, good fortune, or where have you been so long? Honey, it's always been so with us. Look, there's not a nicer sight in the whole world than a boy and his dog. It's always been so. I think it always will be. Mm -hmm. 